Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to the latest Mouthgasm vlog here on the Gavin Partridge YouTube channel. So, uh, I've been vlogging about the experience of uh, mouth and tongue cancer since I had my diagnosis uh, over a week ago now. But I have got a small tongue cancer on the side of my uh, tongue, a small uh, squamous cell carcinoma. And um, it's believed to be stage one, but it's not definitive. I'm going to have an operation on... Uh, Monday, where they will remove uh, cancer and also do a cut to the neck to check the glands. Um, and that will determine, you know, whether it is indeed stage one, if there's no cancer spread microscopically anyway from the mouth to the neck, then it will be a uh, definitive uh, diagnosis of stage one. Um, you know, uh, stage one uh, mouth cancer. If there is any microscopic traces of cancer within the glands in the neck, then it will be a higher stage and further treatment will be required. Adjuvant treatment will be uh, required. So, uh, yeah, I've been vlogging about the uh, experience and uh, I've been doing a vlog for you now. If you're enjoying the vlogs on the channel, then please can you like, share, subscribe, and consider doing that. If you're finding them interesting and informative, you know, uh, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. I had quite a down day yesterday as anybody who saw yesterday's video um, will know. So I was quite down uh, yesterday. It was, I was all right, but, you know, it's, it's a bit of a down day that I had uh, yesterday. Today, I'm having a much, much better day. I'm back on form. So as I explained yesterday's video, you do go up and down. You know, you have your ups and downs as you're going through the uh, cancer experience. Yesterday, I was quite down about things. Uh, today, feeling much better, back on form. So, uh, you know, Gabby's back to normal um, today. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, everybody, for all of the lovely, lovely comments, comments that you left on, on yesterday's video. I have not had time to um, reply to all the comments yet, but I have read them all. And, you know, just thank you so much. Thank you so much to all of you for, for, for those um, lovely comments. So I'm thinking about it today. I've been thinking about anesthesia. So this is going to be a little vlog about uh, anesthetics. And please let me know in the comments your experiences of, uh, you know, anesthesia, anesthetics. Because I am going to have to have a general anesthetic with this uh, operation, of course. Because I'm going to, you know, have my tongue and also my neck um, cut. So <laughs> I would rather not be uh, awake for that, to be honest. I mean, I suppose I wouldn't know what they're doing if I was covered up and they use local anesthetic but I, for this you know it's got to be a general anesthetic so I have quite a few general anesthetics in my time I've always just had a bit of a chat about general anesthesia um, you know because I always find it a very very strange experience when you have that so um, so yeah that's what I thought we'd do for this uh, vlog so um, I will be having a general anesthetic on Monday uh, ahead of my operation uh, of course which means I'll be going to the anesthetic room and in the anesthetic room, the anaesthetist will administer, um, you know, will administer the, the anaesthetic to me, obviously. And uh, and so, I, I don't know if anybody's been through this experience, but um, years ago, because I've had a lot of operations when I was a kid, I mean, I didn't have many uh, operations, you know, from like early to mid-20s on until 2013 when I had the white patch displayed to remove from, from the side of my tongue. So, um, generally when I had the operations, you know, years ago, they would take the bed down to the, uh, down to the, uh, theatre area, you know, you, you would be wheeled down, um, to the theatre area, and, uh, and, and then you would be transferred from your bed, your hospital bed, to, to, like, a trolley, and you'd be taken into the anaesthetic room on the trolley. What happens now, what tends to happen now, is that you don't start off in a ward. Quite unusual now to start off in a ward. I won't be starting off in a ward, you know, um, this time either. You start off in, like, an admissions area, which is like um, individual cubicles adjacent to the operating theatres and anaesthetic area. Um, and, and you have to get into your gown in, like, this cubicle-type thing. They have one chair, and I think they may have a couch or something that you can lay on, but I, I think it's mainly just one or two chairs in this cubicle. Um, and so you have to take off your clothes, you get into a gown, and then, then you walk, you you know, from the cubicle, from the admissions area, to the operating theatre where you will have your, uh, an anaesthetic room initially, where you have your anaesthetic, um, uh, administered. So, uh, it was a very different experience when I had this in 2013. I will be having this again, um, 
on Monday. Um, it's you know you you walk down to the anaesthetic room by uh, by a nurse, so a nurse will accompany you from your cubicle uh, in the admissions area to 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 the anaesthetic room. It's kind of like walking the Green Mile a little bit. If anybody's seen that film where um, where the patient's going to be uh, executed and sat in sat in the chair, you know they walk the Green Mile from their uh, from their prison cell. To 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 old Sparky, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I actually said, you know, I actually uh, said um, in 2013, this is a bit like the Green Mile, isn't it? We're walking the Green Mile, really, aren't we? <laughs> and, uh, me and the nurse both had a laugh about that. But um, you, you, so you get to the anaesthetic room, and you're kind of laid on uh, on a bed uh, type thing, and you're laid flat. Um, and then they put the cannula. They start the anaesthetic. Like there's like degrees of anaesthesia. So you, what you start off with is like sedation, I think, and then and then the real anaesthetic, the real stuff that's going to completely um, disable you. And the the nephritis will have to take over your, uh, you know, your functions, your heart and your your breathing. Everything you know is is taken over by by um, the nephritis with with the real anaesthetic. But the stuff that you start off with is like sedation, and they administer that through. Um, a cannula in in the hand. So uh, you're laid out on this uh, bed. You have the cannula put into your hand, and then they administer the first drug that's going to sedate you. Uh, and and what I have with that is like um, a cold sensation that runs up my arm. But you lie in there, and you feel this cold sensation going up your arm. You don't think anything's going to happen. You know, I didn't think anything was happening. And then suddenly, like the because the, uh, you, you're looking straight up, suddenly the ceiling starts to move, you get this, but I get this ring in my ears, like a buzzing sensation, and then the ceiling starts to swim uh, round and round, goes out of focus, like you're very, very, very drunk, and you're becoming extremely dizzy, you know, as, as you're lying there, and, um, and then I think it just kind of goes black, uh, very briefly, but then the next, almost instantaneously, you know, like a click of the fingers, is that you're beginning to come round and wake up, and what's very odd when you have an anaesthetic is the way you lose time, you know, you lose all of the time that you are out, so if you're out for like an hour, you lose the hour completely, if you're out for a couple of hours, you will lose the two hours completely, if you're out for four or five hours, you lose that completely uh, as well, it's a very, very strange sensation, you know, the way you go, and then almost instantaneously, Simultaneously, you're waking up, and all of the time that's uh, elapsed in between um, uh, has, has just gone. You know, you have no awareness of it whatsoever, um, and and you just you just drift off, or you go off, and then you know, within a couple of seconds, seemingly to you, the patient, within a couple of seconds, you are starting to come round. I always come round like with uh, oxygen mask on my face because I think that's the way they wake you up from anaesthetic, they dilute the anaesthetic in the blood, I think, through oxygen, that's one of the ways that they do it, so uh, I usually come round, like, with, um, with an oxygen mask on, and uh, you'll normally have a nurse next to you that are taking your vital signs, you know, that are taking your pulse and, and, and whatnot, and oxygen levels and so on, and uh, the nurse sort of tells you that the operation is all over, it all went fine, everything went well, um, you know, don't don't worry about anything, they try to reassure you uh, a lot, and, and you're normally sort of in the um, recovery area, I think it's called recovery, uh, you're normally in the recovery area for about an hour, I think, after, after you wake up, again, you're sort of in between sleep at this point, so you're not fully awake, but you're not completely unconscious, so um, it seems like you might only be in the recovery area for about 10 minutes before they start moving you to the ward. Actually, you're in there for longer. I think most people are in the recovery area waking up from the anaesthetic, coming round from the anaesthetic. I think most people are there for like an hour. It does depend, of course, what they've had done. If they've had more invasive um, uh, operations, then they'll be in the recovery area uh, for long. Of course, some people will be moved from the recovery area to intensive care if the operation is uh, is, uh, is, is big enough and warrants, warrants it. Um, uh, but 
you you so you've had about an hour waking up, coming round, and then you'll be taken off uh, when they're happy that um you know the anaesthetic is properly wearing off, and and you're not going to have any risk of you know complications from the anaesthetic. They will then take you off to whatever ward uh, you go to. You're still very sleepy uh, at that stage, so they're wheeling you through the corridors of the hospital. Often, you know, if you've got cuts and things off, <laughs> you'll get some strange looks by um, members of the public that are walking uh, along the corridors uh, as well. But you don't really notice them because, you know, at this point you're still very, very sleepy uh, a lot of the time. Uh, although you aren't losing time at this point. So so you're just generally sleeping now. You're not unconscious. You're not, you're not out in and out of consciousness. You're just sleeping quite a bit. Um, so you don't lose that time. By, by the point you get to the ward, you know, you're not losing uh time uh you will get to the war they will uh then transfer you to your bed now before they will take you back in the bed but you was brought down in um you know when you start off start off from the war but now you are transferred from like the uh the, like the, like the stretcher i suppose but you've been on through the operation and, and afterwards while recovering you are then um you're transferred from that into your hospital bed and uh and there we you will remain you know for the remainder of your stay until you're allowed to go home, albeit you, it is a good idea to get up and start moving about as soon as you possibly can um, to avoid the risk of blood clots and, and so on. But uh, but yeah, that's the general sort of um, thing that you go through when you're having a, an operation. But I always find it very uh, bizarre how you lose the time from when they put you under to when they wake you up. Uh, it's very strange how you how you lose that time, and it's almost like a blink of an eye from going down to waking back up again. You have no awareness whatsoever of what has happened in between. You have no awareness, um, you know, of the time that has elapsed, um, and it's like a blink of an eye. You're put out. You wake up and you have no idea what has happened in between, and and it's it's such a strange sort of feeling, it's such a strange sensation to know that maybe for two, three, four hours, somebody else has been in complete control of you. You know, they they have taken over the entire functionality, really, of of of, of your body. You know, and for that period of time, you have been um, completely unconscious, and somebody else has been controlling what is happening with you. It's, it's a strange sensation, but it's also, um, you know, it's also, uh, it's, it's also, um, I would say pleasurable, but it, it's um it's a very very strange sensation. I don't know if anybody knows what I'm getting at, but but you know um you know that you're cared for during that time, if you see what I mean. So it's probably comforting, you know, in a way, to know that although you have lost all that time and you have no awareness of what has happened, but you know you know that you've been looked after during that time um by by the professionals particularly by the anaesthetist who's responsible for taking you under and then bringing you out and controlling everything that's happening to you you know in between so uh you know something's a bit different no, no, not many people talk about uh, operations and anaesthetics and you know what the experience is uh, is like so i thought you know just be uh, a, a different subject to, to discuss let me know in the comments if you've ever had any uh, anaesthetics if you have um you know how were they uh what did you think did you have that experience where you're put under and then you you seemingly waking up instantaneously you have no recollection of what's going on in in the middle in between let me know in the comments and uh yeah you know it's a different subject too but not many people discuss but i always find anesthetics and anesthesia you know um pretty pretty uh interesting um you, uh, you used to get a lot of, i used to get a lot of sickness as well uh, with anaesthetics, but I think they've got a lot better. Anaesthetics used to make me very sick when I was a kid, but I think, you know, particularly in the last 20 years or so, they've got much, much better in refining both the anaesthetic drugs that they use that put you under, that put you out, but, but have fewer side effects when you wake up. And they've also got much better in giving you anti-nausea medication, you know, uh, before they wake you up and, and you have that period of time when you when when um the anti-nausea medication stops you from feeling sick and and from being sick so that side of it has got a lot better as well over the uh, last few years
Uh, right, Ben, so different subject. I'll be vlogging tomorrow uh, on Operation Eve. So uh, we'll do another vlog um, then. I only found this one uh, interesting. It's a little bit different. Not many people talk about and his fetish, but I find them interesting. Uh, really, so um, I'm strange like that, you know. Uh, thank you so much, uh, everyone, and we'll be back tomorrow with another vlog. But for this vlog, that's all for now, and thanks so much.